In the early 18th century, Europe was divided by a question that seemed simple, but challenged the very laws of nature itself. Isaac Newton claimed the Earth was flattened at the poles, shaped by the force of its own rotation. But followers of René Descartes believed the opposite, that it stretched longer, like an egg standing on its tip. And at the center of this great scientific divide stood one man, a mathematician, philosopher, and explorer, determined to settle the question not with argument, but with evidence. This is the story of Pierre-Louis Maupertuis, the mathematician who measured the Earth. Pierre-Louis Maupertuis was born on May 17, 1698, in Saint-Malo, a fortified port city in Brittany, France. His father, Michel de Maupertuis, was a magistrate from an aristocratic family, while his mother's background provided a cultured environment that valued learning and discourse. The household combined privilege with intellectual engagement, often hosting scholars and officials who discussed law, philosophy, and the natural world. This environment exposed Maupertuis to rigorous thinking and debate from a young age, shaping his curiosity and analytical mind. As a child, Maupertuis demonstrated a persistent fascination with numbers, patterns and natural phenomena. He spent hours observing celestial events, sketching plants and experimenting with measurements, developing early skills in observation and logical reasoning. His interest in mathematics and geometry was paired with a broader engagement in literature, classical studies, and philosophical thought. These formative years laid the foundation for a multidisciplinary approach that would define his scientific career. Maupertuis received formal education at the Jesuit College of Rennes, where he studied Latin, Greek, and rhetoric, alongside rigorous training in logic and reasoning. The Jesuits emphasized precision, order, and disciplined thinking, skills that Maupertuis applied to his growing interest in mathematics and natural philosophy. During this period, he began studying the works of leading figures such as Isaac Newton and René Descartes, absorbing principles of motion, mechanics, and deductive reasoning. These studies introduced him to the methods and questions that would later dominate European science. By his early 20s, Maupertuis had begun publishing original mathematical work, demonstrating a capacity for precise calculation and innovative reasoning. His first papers explored geometry, probability and mechanics, earning attention from established scientists in France. In 1725, he was elected to the French Academy of Sciences, a significant recognition for a young scholar and a formal acknowledgement of his skill and potential. This election provided him a platform to engage with leading scientists and participate in major scientific debates of the era. At the age of 27, he stood on the threshold of international scientific recognition, ready to transform both mathematics and our understanding of the natural world. In 1736, Pierre-Louis Maupertuis undertook one of the most ambitious scientific missions of his career, an expedition to Lapland near the Arctic Circle. The mission was commissioned by the French Academy of Sciences to resolve a heated debate in Europe regarding the shape of the Earth. Isaac Newton had proposed that the Earth was an oblate spheroid, flattened at the poles, while followers of Cartesian theory believed it to be elongated at the poles. The accuracy of these measurements held significance not only for scientific theory, but also for navigation, cartography, and understanding the physical laws governing the planet. Maupertuis prepared meticulously for the expedition, gathering a team of mathematicians, astronomers, and assistants, as well as instruments for triangulation and astronomical observation. The team traveled through harsh winter conditions, navigating frozen rivers and snow-laden forests, often facing severe cold that tested both their endurance and the precision of their instruments. Every step required careful planning, as even minor errors could undermine months of work. 
Despite these challenges, Mopa Tree remained focused, emphasizing methodical measurements and careful record keeping. Upon reaching Lapland, Mopatui and his team began their triangulation and angular measurements to determine the length of a degree of latitude near the pole. They established observation points across rugged terrain, measured distances with chains and rods, and carefully calculated angles between peaks and landmarks. The work required both mathematical precision and physical stamina, as instruments had to remain stable in sub-zero temperatures. Each measurement brought them closer to understanding the true shape of the Earth. In addition to measurements, Maupertui documented local geography, atmospheric conditions, and celestial observations. He applied mathematical reasoning to interpret the data, comparing results with measurements from other parts of the world. The expedition also fostered collaboration with Swedish scientists, who provided local knowledge and assisted in refining calculations. These exchanges contributed to a broader scientific understanding across Europe, demonstrating the value of international cooperation in research. After months of laborious work in extreme conditions, Maupertui calculated that the Earth was indeed flattened at the poles, confirming Newton's theory. This finding settled the long-standing debate, providing empirical evidence that supported the law of universal gravitation. The result established Maupertuis as a leading figure in European science and demonstrated the power of combining theoretical mathematics with field observations. It was a decisive moment that elevated his reputation internationally. After his return from the Lapland expedition, Pierre-Louis Maupertui focused on the theoretical side of science, exploring the principles that govern motion, energy, and nature itself. He formulated what would later be known as the principle of least action, proposing that physical systems tend to operate in a way that minimizes a quantity called action, which combines energy and time. This principle provided a unified way to understand motion and forces and became a cornerstone of classical mechanics. Maupertui carefully developed the mathematics behind this idea, using calculus and geometric reasoning to support his arguments. Maupertui also advanced his work in probability and the calculus of variations, applying rigorous mathematical methods to problems in mechanics and natural philosophy. He studied the equilibrium of forces, the behavior of moving bodies, and the optimization of physical systems. His writings demonstrated a balance between precise mathematical calculation and conceptual reasoning, bridging abstract theory with practical observation. In 1750, Maupertuis published his major philosophical work, Essai de Cosmologie, in which he explored the order and design of the universe. He argued that natural phenomena follow consistent laws and that mathematics can reveal the underlying principles governing the world. His work merged scientific observation with philosophical reflection, showing that the universe could be understood both empirically and conceptually. These ideas contributed to broader Enlightenment debates about determinism, causality and the rationality of nature. Maupertuis' ideas influenced a wide circle of European scientists, including Leonhard Euler, Joseph Louis Lagrange, and Pierre Simon Laplace, who expanded on his variational methods and principles of mechanics. His work demonstrated the power of mathematics as a tool to model and predict natural phenomena. He also engaged with critics and contemporaries, defending his principles in correspondence and publications. These debates helped refine his theories and encouraged rigorous scientific discussion throughout Europe. In addition to his theoretical achievements, Maupertuis continued to participate actively in the French Academy of Sciences, presenting papers, leading discussions, and mentoring younger scientists. He emphasized clarity in reasoning, precision in measurement, and careful documentation of experiments. Through his leadership and publications, he fostered a culture of scientific rigor that extended beyond his own research. His influence shaped the next generation of mathematicians and natural philosophers.
Maupertuis' intellectual vision positioned him as a pioneering thinker whose contributions would influence generations of scientists and philosophers. In the final years of his life, Pierre-Louis Maupertuis continued to publish research and refine his theories in mathematics, physics and natural philosophy. He remained deeply involved with the French Academy of Sciences, serving multiple terms as president and mentoring younger scientists. His work extended to studies of mechanics, probability and geodesy, maintaining the same rigor that had marked his earlier achievements. He married and had a family, balancing personal life with his scientific pursuits. While some records of his private life are limited, it is clear that he valued intellectual companionship and discussion within both family and professional circles. These connections provided support for his research and contributed to his influence within European scientific society. Throughout his career, Maupertuis encountered controversy and criticism. Philosophical interpretations of his principle of least action were challenged, and some contemporaries questioned the originality of his ideas in mathematics and mechanics. Voltaire and other public intellectuals debated his work, while Newtonian supporters scrutinized his interpretations of physical laws. Despite these controversies, Maupertuis' achievements earned him widespread recognition across Europe. He was a member of prestigious scientific societies, including the Royal Society of London, and received honors for his empirical and theoretical contributions. His leadership in the Academy of Sciences helped shape scientific standards and practices, ensuring that empirical rigor and mathematical precision remained central to research. Maupertuis passed away on July 27, 1759, in Basel, Switzerland, at the age of 61. His death marked the conclusion of a career that had transformed mathematics, physics, and the study of the natural world. He was remembered as a meticulous observer, innovative mathematician, and thoughtful philosopher. His burial in Basel and subsequent recognition ensured that his contributions would continue to be studied and appreciated by future generations. Pierre-Louis Maupertuis' life demonstrates how careful observation, disciplined mathematics, and thoughtful philosophy can produce enduring scientific impact. From his early studies in Saint-Malo to the Lapland expedition and the formulation of the principle of least action, his work reshaped understanding of the natural world. Controversies and debates did not diminish his influence. They highlighted the importance of rigorous inquiry and critical discussion. Today, Maupertuis is remembered as a visionary mathematician and philosopher whose contributions continue to resonate across the sciences.